Everybody, this is uh, Jim at SP500Chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 index. It is uh, the 13th of December after the close and we're going to look at the S&P 500 chart. But before we do, I need to remind you that the website and this video are for educational purposes only and nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. And uh, nothing has changed since yesterday. I'm still not a licensed financial professional, and I'm still just a guy who draws lines on charts. Okay, we're going to start the day off looking at the hourly chart. And uh, because we, I just want to remind you of a couple things, uh, this line we've talked about uh, as uh, now resistance. In other words, this red line right here will be extremely difficult for the market to get over uh, if it even is able to make another uh, shot at it. So uh, w once this line broke back here in uh, the third week of November, you can expect a back test, which we got in early December, and then uh, probably going to have a tough sledding to get back up there. Um, the second thing I, I want to remind you of is we are now looking at um, a completion of the minimum target, moving into a five-minute chart here. Actually, it'll look better on a 10. We've been looking at uh, everything above this black line as being a potential kind of a, a, a head and shoulders-ish kind of pattern. Ignore all the lines except for this black line right here. Because we have a rally to the left of it, then we have a larger rally, and then a smaller rally. And even though that line broke, um, it regained, got back over the top of it, then yesterday traded below it, today briefly got over the top of it, but today um, the market traded down to that low 1220 area that this top has kind of been pointing to uh, for the past few days. It, I was thinking yesterday that uh, this 1229 area uh, 1228, whatever it was that was the low from yesterday. I thought that it was probably a 1228 and change. I thought it was possible that that might have satisfied this, this pattern. But uh, clearly today, it appears that uh, the market wanted to go ahead and get that job done. Now, why do these uh, topping patterns have a tendency to uh, create a move to the downside that is equal to the height of the tallest point and that area of resistance? And the answer to that question is, it's magic. <laughs> I really don't know why. It seems as if the same amount of energy that went into taking, um, to taking levels up over that line is expended as it breaks down through that line. The difference is, usually the downward moves are significantly faster than the upward moves. I've heard somebody say that uh, to just in general terms, stocks spend two-thirds of their time going up and one-third of their time going down. And if you look at the average duration of bull markets and bear markets, that, that you can see how that's even applicable to longer range moves. Um, I did uh, identify a little bit uh, more clearly. I had a gray line uh, where now this uh, bright green is because we have one, two, three, a little dip under four, and then today five touches on this line. So I'm thinking this is a line of technical uh, importance. And then I took this, uh, this support line and I snapped it uh, parallel. As a matter of fact, I'll show you how I do that for those of you who, uh, who uh, mess around on free stock charts uh, Dot com. That's not my website, by the way. That's completely unrelated to my site. Um, what you do is you can click click on that line, edit, create parallel line. There's your parallel line, and then you can drag it wherever you want it. Now it's not a perfect match, but it pretty much 
pretty well lines up with the last three uh, touches on that top line. So if the market uh, was to rally tomorrow, um, you would expect this line to probably give it a battle. And, and if it were to break that line, then you would uh, know, well, this uh, downward move from 1266 uh, down to uh, today, uh, about 1220, um, if we break that line at some point tomorrow or, or later this week, then you can probably take that as a signal that, uh, that at least this part of, uh, of that uh, downward move is over and we're going to get some kind of little intermediate uh, positive trend underway. You can also see that the rally today pulled back almost uh, to the apex of the uh, triangle. Well, that's, that's a little bit, let's look at it on an hourly chart. Here's our triangle between these red lines right here and here. And there's our apex. And remember, the apex is an area that tends to uh, have some technical uh, importance to it. Now, the, uh, the S&P did rally up over that apex for just a bit, but you can see once it got over it, uh, to my eyes, it looks like it just made a top. So again, here's that apex. Okay, we bounced off of it here, got over the top of it, stayed over it for, uh, well, it didn't close over it on the second, but stayed over it roughly for three days, got over it again a little bit here, kind of corresponding to this move back here. It's kind of symmetrical. And then uh, today almost touched it and then sold back down. So as we were looking at things yesterday, you'll recall, I was thinking that I was thinking that this 1245 would probably uh, give us some uh, resistance. It, it really didn't. Um, but it did later in the day, but it didn't uh, early in the morning. And it looks to my eye like that apex did have something to say. But more importantly, we ran across, we ran into this uh, descending line of resistance right here. Again, not exactly. So there was a little wiggle room. This wasn't picture perfect in here uh, by any stretch. So for tomorrow going forward, I am expecting uh, a little bump up. I'm thinking we will probably rally. How long that rally will go, I don't know. If we if we can rally and take out that top green line, then uh, more than likely we will head up and, uh, and could uh, make another run up towards... Uh, towards where we should find some resistance around 1266. So here are the here are the uh, resistance and support areas. To begin with, I've, I see uh, a cluster of support right near the close today. Okay, we've got um, this gray line, which is the minimum uh, target of this uh, kind of complex head and shoulders-ish top okay that is uh, not necessarily where you would expect to bounce but it is a line that is technically important because that's where you would expect the minimum move to go to then we've got that descending triangle line that although it was uh, broken uh, briefly late in the day it uh, the the S&P did manage to close just above this line and again this line should be support and then we've got this descending bright green line from this little, uh, I don't want to call this a channel because it's not, it's not really clean because you've got, uh, you don't have anything that touches it back here for about three days, but you do have one, two, and almost three uh, points that define it. It's worth leaving on the chart. So uh, tomorrow, let's see if we bounce up, uh, make a run up to the, to the, uh, uh, 1240s, and uh, if so, uh, if the market can show enough strength to get up over that line, then um, then it's possible that uh, the, that this downward trend could could reverse for a bit. But again, if it does, we're still looking at this apex area to run a little resistance. We're looking at 1266, which is uh, a four times tested. Uh, area of horizontal resistance and then we're looking at the neckline 
from that big uh, head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, there's the neckline. We're looking at that neckline as really uh, producing some strong uh, resistance should uh, this market have the legs to make it over 1266. So that um, is pretty much it for the day. Oh, I want to show you one more thing. If we go and look on a two-minute chart, and I know that uh, I know the Fed uh, met today, and that adds a lot to the volatility. But that still sure looks like a like a well-formed little uh, 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 bear flag right there with that upward slant, and um, so that played out pretty well. Let's see. It is possible that this could be a bear flag right here as well, but but it's uh, it's a little. Uh, it's a little interesting that we find it right here because, again, this is right at an area where the market managed to close. The S&P in, in particular did manage to close over one, two, and even uh, if we count this minimum uh, target line, over three lines of technical importance. And the last thing I want to show you, uh, taking a much longer range view of things, I think this is important to keep in mind. Um, as we look at this three-day chart, uh, I want you just to focus on two, two uh, what I think are going to be very important uh, um, trend lines. The first one is up here. This line is derived from the 2007 uh, market top uh, and the uh, spring of 2011 market top at 1370 and you'll note that it almost exactly lines up with the right shoulder over here um, it set in the summer of, of 2011 now I want to show you this line Okay, and it extends back here. Uh, it only highlights here. Um, hold on, I'll change that. There we go. If the S and P is able to get over this line, then I'm I'm willing to say without too much reservation that the bull trend uh, will continue. But it's got to get over that line, and that is kind of the the first thing well the first thing has got to happen it's got to get over this neckline right here but then it's got to it's got a muscle over this guy right here too and if if the market can do that then uh, then my uh, bearish bias at this point in time I would have to question that okay uh, additionally there is this ascending blue line that is almost exactly the neckline of this inverted head and shoulders back in uh, 2009 and late 2008. Not exactly, but pretty close. But you can see that this line is uh, does line up with the uh, bottoms in uh, in the summer of 2010 and the bottom in the uh, summer of 2011. Now, what is the significance of that? Well, if the S&P cannot get over this red line, and if it instead trades down and retests this blue line, and then breaks through it to the downside, then what we will be looking at here, guys, is a really large head and shoulders. Now, I, I'm not comfortable in saying this is a, quote, head and shoulders top, because the market really didn't go that far to get there. Usually you think of a head and shoulders top as the market goes from 1 to 10, and then it makes a top from 10 to 12, and then it comes back down to 3. Okay, But in this case, um, it sure has that shape. So if this line was to break at some point uh, in the future, then I think you have to be aware of, of what the implications of that could be. And what that could be would be a move, uh, the minimum target from such a break of this line. Again, if it happens, the minimum target from that would uh, be oh uh, under 900 
Uh, I think I've measured it to probably in the 860 to 880 range. So uh, obviously we're not we're not anywhere uh, close to that yet. As a matter of fact, we we're actually closer to this top line. But this line as resistance and this line as support I see as being extremely critical. And what's going to make this more and more interesting as we go forward is obviously these lines uh, are going to intersect. When are they going to intersect? Well, let's find out. It's going to be a ways. They're going to intersect in, uh, in 2014. So, <laughs> I would be willing to bet that within the next year, almost certainly either this line or this line will get taken out. I don't, I don't think we're going to go sideways for, for a whole, whole long time before the market ends up taking one of these guys out. So look, that's just the last thing I wanted to show you. Not really trying to scare you, but uh, just trying to get you to, to, to consider what, what the future may hold with the markets, because you've got to have a long-range outlook uh, as well as that short-range um, um, chart. So look, thanks for watching the video. If uh, you are a subscriber, I want to thank you for being uh, one. And uh, if you're not, I just want to ask you to consider it. It's cheap. It's $19.95 per month or $189.95 for a year. And there's a uh, video uh, at, at the end of every day. I may take a few days off here and there uh, due to necessity, but, uh, but I, I think I've probably only missed 10 days uh, at the most uh, in the past uh, year and, and uh, two or three months since I've been doing these videos. So look, thanks for watching. Hope you'll stop by sp500chart.com and check it out.